Hot Topics and Surgery exclusive event is the Easy Surge Stapler under the microscope. It will feature experts from the United States, Qatar, Lebanon, China, Slovenia, Guatemala, Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, Poland, and Brazil. We would like to thank our partners of Video Communications, YouTube, Facebook, Bariatric News, Simmit, and Explore Surgical for setting up, promoting, and accrediting this webinar, which is sponsored by our platinum sponsors, Easy Surge Medical. Ethicon Endosurgery, Conmed, Medtronic, Beach Surgical, David Medical, Lexington Medical, CMR Surgical, Panther Healthcare, Peng Medical. Our old sponsors, Striker, Arthrex, Fit for Me, WL Gore, Carl Stortz, Bariatric Solutions, Advanced Medical Solutions, Liquid Band Fix 8. Our silver sponsors, USGI Medical, Mass Bariatric Technologies, Richard Wolf. Our bronze sponsors, Boringer Laboratories, Intuitive Surgical, Baxter, Apollo Endosurgery. This is the 46th webinar of the IBC Oxford University Academic Series that has over 3 million unique downloads and is streaming live to millions of viewers from 200 countries and territories on the IBC website, IBC.com, the YouTube channel, the Facebook live, the Facebook page, the IBC Twitter feed, LinkedIn, the IBC. This event is organized by Mr. Harris Baja. Center in Guatemala City, Guatemala. He's also president of IFSO Latin America. It is my honor to present him so he can present our moderators. Thank you very much, Ariel. Thank you very much, Harris, for the invitation for me part of this wonderful meeting. Uh, it is my privilege to present Professor Laurent Layani from uh, United Arab Emirates and France. He's the head of surgical department and director of bariatric and metabolic surgical center, Al Shark Hospital, Fujare, United Arab Emirates, and Professor Edward Lin from the United States. He's professor of surgery and chief of gastrointestinal and general surgery, Emory University School of Medicine, Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you very much. Welcome to everyone. Thank you, Professor Estuardo. Uh we're going to pass it on uh, now uh, to um, Professor Lin, so uh, we can introduce our first speaker. Yes, happy to be here. Thank you, IBC and Ariel, for organizing this. Dr. Haysam Fawal is from Lebanon. He's our first speaker. He's someone I've personally followed for some time now. He trained at AUB and Paris, and he teaches for major industry courses. He's a trailblazer. He was known to be one of the first, or if not the first, uh, he's the first guy to do sleeve gastrectomies worldwide using regional block anesthesia. And that just threw the whole world into a, a uproar and drew a lot of attention to him. So I've been following him since that. He's president of the Pan-Arab Society of Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery. He's on the board of Fort Ipso. He's a master surgeon in metabolic and bariatric surgery and achieved the uh, Surgical Review Corporation designation for Makassat Hospital in Beirut, where he currently leads their program. So I look forward to Dr. Fowell's presentation. Thank you, Professor Lin, for the uh, introduction. I will share my screen. Okay. So um, when Harris asked me to uh, talk about uh, sleeve gastrectomy using Easy Surge, I was really a bit uh, hesitant. Then it is my first time to talk about uh, a company or a product itself. Uh, 
Um, I'm, I'm a trainer with Easy Surge. I did one or two life transmission to, um, uh, for different surgeries, but I'm also a trainer in all the other medical companies and the consultants. So um, this is my conflict of interest. And uh, the reason why really I, want, uh, I accepted to do this presentation is first to congratulate the Chinese company for their work uh, to compete with giant companies in the field. This is number one. And second, to ring a bell to the other companies that they are not alone in the market and the products you are working in from uh, new companies may be as good as the ones we, uh, we are used to use since 20 years. So I cannot really talk here about a wide experience with Easy Surge. I'm operating with their products since like three to four months. But before going to talk about this table itself, I would like to have some introduction on why I believe medical companies, um, having more and more medical companies is essential for us as clinicians. We know that from the IFSO and ASMBS data, that we are operating only 1% of the candidates worldwide. And this is, I believe we have several reasons for this. Number one, the awareness on obesity as a disease in the world. Number two, the lack of experts and mentors in the field. We don't have uh, enough uh, fellowship programs and training courses for uh, young surgeons to operate um, the right way the bariatric surgery. Third, the cost of bariatric procedures, which is till now, it is still high, and we are now in an economic crisis. I think these should be changed uh, very soon in order to deliver this uh, service to more and more people. And number five, number four, the coverage from insurance companies and uh, social security. And this is where I think medical companies may um, uh, play an essential role, increasing awareness, number one. Now, um, if we look at the medical companies, I mean, who, uh, who have the, some medicine for weight loss, you can see a huge campaigns on obesity treatment. And the last week I received the three um, uh, on my Facebook page, uh, three advertisements in a row, uh, okay? And they are advertising for obesity as a disease for their medical management, although it is by far less effective from our surgeries. And we, with our companies, uh, pro uh, product companies, uh, we, are, we have this taboo on no, no, we cannot talk about obesity. So I think this should be changing. Look at these three, I mean, um, uh, on my Facebook, I am talking to you, this is my Facebook. I have the three advertisements from medical companies on obesity as a disease and on the medical management, they don't mention a word about surgery. So we as, as clinicians, we cannot advertise. Awareness should be done from medical companies and we should have their support. Easy Surge, Medtronic, j, &J whatever. Second, having accept, acceptable cost makes this procedure available, available to all patients uh, who, need, who are in need, not only for middle or high class patients. And third, where medical companies can play an essential role, I believe is supporting research and training courses, because if we start to have more and more surgeries in the future, we need more uh, trained surgeons that know the time. We have general surgeons doing bariatric surgery, we will have I think uh, a lot of complications and this will reflect badly on all the practice. And I give you an example from a recent balloon company who do not accept to let any clinician to put the balloon unless they trained him to do the balloon. And we leave general surgeons to do bariatric surgery without any mentoring, without any sponsoring. And this is how I think we will have a bad reputation on our practice. And this is where I believe having more medical companies in the field will help us as uh, bariatric surgeons. So now talking about easy surge itself and what we need Anna, as, as a surgeon, I need a good stapler that I can use with my hand. I need a good grasping force, which is found in this uh, uh, stapler, which is probably equal. I cannot compare with the uh, with the others, but they uh, they claim they are as equal to uh, another 
uh, staplers. And this is very important for the easy end of light, which is the articulation, which reach 120 degrees, which we need sometimes, especially in um, uh, gastric bypass, when anastomosis or other bypasses. So the fact that we having 120 degrees uh, is an advantage. I will show you a rapid video that I did not edit. And uh, these are two cases that I operated last week. So um, just to uh, show you the... Um, are having some problem in Windows. I will share again. Sorry. So we can see here the stapling. Always we should watch this angle, having the uh, tube back and forth, because it is sometimes very tricky and we may have uh, stenosis at the incisura. The good thing here and is we have six staplers to reach the end of the, these 60 millimeters. And dividing the pressure on six, uh, I mean compressions may, I think, help in having a good alignment of the uh, staplers as you will see now. So you can see a good uh, stapling. Again, I did not edit any. I, I presented as I have it uh, last week. If we continue with the another green, I will show you the blue one. And I'm not from those surgeons who do a super tight sleeve. Uh, I don't believe in super tight sleeve. I think uh, Mohit and uh, uh, Manuel talked yesterday about it, and this is my uh, my policy. I go for a relatively a loose sleeve. I believe the more we have a tight sleeve, the patient with time will not eat well and will, he will replace his meals with uh, chocolates and uh, carbs and he will uh, regain weight. So, and all the, you can see here the nice stapling, you can, it is clear, okay. So I'm more for a, not a super tight sleeve. I use 36 French and I leave, uh, like, I leave it a bit uh, loose even on this 36 French. I will show you the blue one. And this is not the endolite, this is the regular easy surge. I put my stapler on the tube and then I leave it a bit uh, loose on it. Again, nice stapling. This is very rapidly another case also. Okay, I will skip this video and go to the end of my presentation. Thank you. 
Excuse me, gentlemen. This is the, my take home message. I believe that easy search products may have similar outcome when compared to another staplers. It had a great grasping force and a good articulation up to 120 degrees, but we need more uh, clinical data and a greater number of patients um, to um, uh, be more sure that, uh, and to have more trust in terms of uh, safety and efficacy of this product. The market is open now for the company since obesity become a pandemic and it affects uh, one third of the globe. Uh, safe medical companies, and what I mean by safe is not any company that do stapler, we can use it. Uh, we need an FDA approval, we need CE, we need, we need the clinical data. So safe medical companies that work on making a difference into awareness, number one, a training, research and cost will have my preference and I believe the preference of all clinicians to use their products. Thank you very much. Excellent presentation, Harzam. Congratulations. I have a question for you. Do you oversee the staple line or do you any uh, reinforcement in the line of the suture? Do you think it's, is it necessary? Yes, uh, my practice is to sue 95% of my stapler lines unless it is really super, super dry. So, and most of the time I just do the over -sew. Okay, thank you. Edward? So Hassan, I have not put this stapler in my hands. So uh, tell us how this stapler feels in your hands and what's the difference between that, Metro, uh, the Medtronic Covidian one or the Ethicon? And what, what did you do to convince yourself to try out the stapler? Well, uh, the, the reason why, and I'm, I'm always, uh, Professor Lin, open for any change, on, uh, but provided it is a safe change. And I was really, I'm not hiding a secret, I was very resistant and uh, to, to start with new companies other than j and and Medtronic. But when you see that uh, these companies have the FDA approval, the CE approval, and I asked a lot of my colleagues who uh, operated with these products and they, they, are, they said it is safe, it is um, uh, fine. So then the first time I used it, uh, it was in a live transmission. I asked them to bring me one kit uh, one day before. And what I realized, number one, a light instrument, it is not heavy like one of the other products you mentioned. I, do, I don't want to advertise or talk about anyone. So it is not really super heavy to manipulate. It is a one-handed um, uh, use, no need to use your both hands. It is very soft, especially when you apply your first or second stapler on the pyloric antrum where the tissue sometimes is very hard. So it is very soft while doing your stapling. And when you look at the staplers afterwards, it is a good aligned staplers. So I'm talking about a product that have a uh, American European approval that have a good experience with a good eminent surgeons worldwide. And when I used it, I find that maybe it is as, as good. I don't know. I don't know yet. Yani. I cannot talk about experience by operating 30 or 40 cases. And I did thousands with J and J Metronic, and they are perfect. So really, I cannot talk about uh, to compare, but. From what I use till now, I think it is a good product to use. So you felt that it was lighter than the other staplers? Okay. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aizan. And now it's my privilege to present Dr. Professor Osama Taha from Egypt. He's the Chief Medical Officer of Weight Overweight Surgery Clinics in Cairo, Egypt, Chief of Bariatric Surgery Unit, Aswit University Hospital, Aswit, Egypt. Professor of Surgery, Aswit University, Aswit Egypt. So, welcome. Thank you, Eduardo, for the great introduction. Uh, and thank you, Haitham, for the great presentation. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, pass the thanks to all the panel uh, and my friends, and for sure, uh, easy search. Uh, actually, I'm... Uh, um, I, I would like to comment first, I'm, I'm not a single company guy. Um, I've been working in this field for the last 15 years, 
and uh, we do uh, 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 bariatric surgeries with all the products actually. Uh, so uh, w w I like my operating theater to be like a gathering of all the companies. Uh, so we may have five, seven, eight cases that we work with uh, three, four companies. So, uh, um, and we should do that because this is healthy. I think competition is healthy between companies because the winner in the competition will be uh, first the patient, uh, second uh, the surgeons. Uh, uh, and as I, I felt actually in the last five to seven years that the major companies taking us for granted and 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 when the patency end and uh, these products comes up we we had enough courage to, to use them and 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 to to try them uh, not on the expense of the patient safety yet uh, we had some references we asked a lot so we, we used it uh, we tried it and when it uh, gained trust we, we began uh, 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 using it extensively. We've been using Easy Surge uh, in, in our bariatric practice in the last six months, and we do uh, sleeve gastrectomies, Ronoi gastric bypasses, uh, mini gastric bypasses, and uh, uh, even we, we trust it now for redo surgeries. Yet, uh, for the sake of the time, uh, I'll just uh, uh, we'll talk about the 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 the, uh, the mini gastric bypass. So I got three videos actually, and, and uh, I would like to, to. We don't use the 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 ordinary one. We use the pro edition. Uh, and we found the pro edition is so. so this is a, a quick video for. Uh, 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 a mini gastric bypass using uh, uh, one of the major companies and you I don't want to waste your time seeing me doing uh, the same procedure this is a mini gastric bypass using Covidian procedures and this is another I think gastric bypass using the other company. This is the Covidian one. So uh, since uh, six months uh, from January uh, 2021 till July uh, 2021, we've been operating more than 300 cases of uh, mini gastric bypasses. Uh, the majority of them uh, was uh, using uh, the major uh, uh, companies like J&J uh, &J and, and Covidian. And we've been using uh, 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 about 105 uh, patients uh, with mini gastric bypass using easy surgery. I'm, I'm talking about the fresh cases, and the novo cases, not the redo cases. And in the next webinars, we may go uh, for some tough cases using uh, the same company. These are the demographic data of our patients. Uh, we operated 243 cases using uh, the major companies, and we used the Easy Surge in 105 cases uh, of mini gastric bypass in, in the last six months. As you see here, regarding the operative time, uh, the complications, the bleeding, uh, either minor, major, or moderate, uh, we don't have uh, any significant difference. Actually, we didn't have, we didn't face uh, any problem. Uh, using uh, these kind of staples. We didn't feel that we shift our practice from class A to class B. Uh, we, 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 we feel that it's the same, same outcomes, same everything. Every single instrument uh, 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 should go for uh, a learning curve. Uh, yet when you are uh, steady enough and, and know how to use uh, the easy search stapler, you will find it very friendly, especially the pro edition and not the uh, traditional one. We didn't have, uh, God bless, we didn't have any leakage, any mortality in the last six months. So we trust it more and more. Uh, and I would like you to see uh, this 
patients, a female patient, 35 years old, weight was 135 kilograms with body mass index of 48.3. Decision was a, a mini gastric bypass and I was using one of the uh, uh, major staplers uh, and the most recent uh, edition uh, of it without saying names. It is the automated taper. So, um, and from actually from that time, uh, I gained more and more trust uh, 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 regarding uh, easy surge staplers because it saved uh, this situation very easily uh, in a minute. Uh, and I would like also to comment that uh, what I like in, in Easy Surge is the approach that they are approaching uh, 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 these days. They do a lot of webinars and they try to declare that their uh, instruments are reliable and you can depend on that um, by uh, uh, inviting more and more experts, uh, 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 gaining more and more trust, uh, uh, and at the same time, uh, uh, they um, uh, contribute in the awareness and spreading the knowledge. Uh, and what I expect from them, actually, uh, during the next uh, 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 short time, is to have uh, more and more hand-on master classes and mentorship courses uh, to let the junior surgeons uh, 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 become a bit uh, not hesitant uh, uh, regarding using the easy surge and to have more and more, more trust in the instruments because the instruments has some learning curve you know uh, its compression is a bit different. Uh, its mechanism of working is a bit different uh, than Covidian and Panther and 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 the other staplers that is copy paste like uh, like Medtronic. Uh, as you see here, I didn't take more tissues in the stapler, uh, and in this stapler, this what happens. And actually at that time, this was, I think, the second uh, case in the, in the list. And I didn't have any other types of staplers in my inventory, in my storage. And this is a complete staple failure, as you see, in a very critical uh, uh, place, which is uh, just, Inside the, the, the fat pad of the stomach, which is, we are always uh, uh, very cautious regarding this place. Um, I would like for sure to have this misfire in much more distant part. So this is a complete misfire, as you see. And I just think for a minute, I will leave the video running. I'm always in these situations taking stay sutures to not uh, 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 make the gap become more and more wider, just to limit the damage, limit the control the damage as much as I can. And actually, I was thinking about just over pursue it and then when i find myself as haitham said uh, we do it over 36 french we do not uh, uh, believe in over restriction so i had some space here to bring the easy search in and just fire Everything went fine, cleanly stopped, and I excised this remnant, not all the remnant, just the third part, and I continued the, as you see here, 
I took this out by also the same stapler. I controlled the bleeding and did the methylene blue test and it went fine. So having more than one stapler in your OR theater, this is my, 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 my taking home message, is crucial. Don't, uh, I, I'm saying it very frankly, I'm not loyal to any uh, uh, company. I'm just loyal to my patients. Whatever company will, 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 will give me the, the parameters that I need uh, and the safety for the patient, this is how it ends. Everything went fine. No methylene blue out. Field is dry. Everything is okay. And patient went fine and, 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 and went home uh, next day. So we as professionals should convey uh, the, the message to the juniors. Please don't rely on one company. Companies are coming. Uh, especially uh, the Chinese and the other companies are coming. Uh, competition is really good. Uh, we will uh, take the advantage of this competition to teach more and more junior surgeons. Uh, your operating theater should be a demo for all the instruments and all the staplers that proved to be safe. Uh, these are our data in the last six months. And uh, still, uh, uh, we need more and more data. We need more and more comparisons. We need more and more follow-up, a longer follow-up. And we will work on it. And we will support uh, uh, the companies that uh, pop up uh, 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 these days, because uh, this is our responsibility and, 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 and uh, toward uh, for the sake of the patients and for the junior surgeons uh, to increase the awareness, increase the number of surgeons, increase the number of bariatric surgeries. We, we are operating only 1% of the demanded volume all over the world. We need more and more surgeons. We need more and more procedures. We need more and more awareness. And uh, uh, I should congratulate Easy Surge for their scientific activity. They are going very scientific. They do a lot of webinars. They 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 don't care about that the video is showing their staplers or other staplers. Their care is to teach more and more surgeons and to spread the awareness to junior and seniors that we are here uh, doing good job. And, and uh, I would like just to congratulate them and congratulate all the panel. And thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Osama. And thank you for your honesty. I, I really enjoyed this video. It is not easy to present a complication like that. I had it once too, and I did the same. Uh, thanks to the role that you have enough space to put another, another staple. So thank you very much. I don't thank have you. any question because it is, it is very, very, very easy to see that you resolved the, the problem. Uh, Professor Layani, do we have any comment, please? Your question, please. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, listen, to, thank you for inviting me. Um, I have been using uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese uh, a stapler for a very long time, in fact, now. Uh, it's not easy search, uh, but it's some other, other type. I've, I've tried uh, uh, when I was doing some work in India, uh, and I have this, some guns in my hand. And, uh, uh, and uh, I, have, I have to say, uh, whatever... Um, Whatever uh, uh, stapler I have been ha I have used in the past, it was very good. Uh, so right right now, for the last two or um, uh, maybe more than two years now, I use uh, 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 a David company. It's called uh, uh, it's a Chinese uh, product. Uh, my personal uh, my my preference always been I like and because I've been using for a long time, I've not I don't use any hand type. Uh, stapler anymore for, for many, many years. So it's all power. And the, the uh, David, uh, uh, David the stapler uh, is uh, basically a, re a replicate of the uh, GNJ power echelon. It's, per it's very good. It is nothing to say. I have no issue with it. I've done now, we've done maybe my 400, maybe 500 patients. 
all type of surgery, sleeve gastrectomy, gastric bypass, mini bypass, revision, sleeve to bypass, mini bypass, whatever, colectomy, nephrectomy, and name it. They, it's, 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 it's very good. No issue with the, the product. Um, I have, uh, uh, and I, I, I completely agree with Osama and Hesem. Uh, the product is, uh, is very good and uh, whatever is good in your hand, I am not a great lover of the of the Covidian type gun. It's a but I I it's no issue. I like it. I used to use the uh, power Covidian uh, uh, for a long time in my public work because it was uh, a no issue. Uh, you have to say that the cost is really important when you work in private practice in UAE or in Egypt or in Lebanon. So it's no doubt that the cost. And I know Sama is going, is going to have to agree with me. We, it's almost half of the price. So when the patient pay cash, you have to look at is a product good uh, and is the cost is less um, and there's nothing else to say. If the, 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 the product is good, we are good enough, uh, Osama and Aysam and others, to use actually any, any gum. Uh, anything at all, uh, as long as the, the, the product works. Uh, so I'm, um, uh, I am a strong believer than uh, this particular, I am sure Easy Surge, I checked the website. Uh, they have a, a very good line of products from uh, Stapler and Staple hemorrhoids and Trocar. Uh, I use David because I like the 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 GNG type I don't know how I can call this but nevertheless power gun um, it's just because I I have this uh, I think it's an advantage to have a power gun than a handgun regardless of the company but that's all um, so yes um, and I don't think I, I'm going to change so. Uh, now, uh, my friend from Covidian and GNJ, they're a little bit pissed off with me because I don't use the, the gun anymore. And I tell them, you know, I have to pay double, I'm not going to use it. I, you know, it's, it's just double is a lot of money. Double is about uh, 10,000 dirham versus 5,000 dirham. So 10,000 dirham is, uh, let's say, 2,500, is 2,500 euro versus uh, half of 2,500 euro. Uh, and I have no issue with it. I have no, I have zero bleeding, no complication. I actually, I think the 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 the, the, the complications can occur with any type of gun. I've been uh, stuck with some uh, top gun, uh, and uh, so that yes, that's all. Uh, and uh, congratulations. If anyone want to ask me a question about this. David, uh, Gan, uh, it's uh, you are welcome, and uh, uh, it's not very perhaps uh, uh, what I say. It's it's not spread around the UAE uh, because it's it's always the same thing. When it's covered by the insurance, whatever country you work in Australia, for example, with what some of my previous fellows, or in a public hospital here, which is covered by the uh, uh, UAE government. Uh, obviously, they are using mainly COVID and GNJ because they don't really care about the cost. But when costs come to uh, an equation, uh, I think, uh, uh, and, and the product is as good as, that's it. I tell you everything. Thank you. Muy bien. Very well. Uh, Laurent, please introduce uh, Bassem Fayadi. Safadi, please. Basim, but I don't have the... Okay, so let me do it then. I'm going to introduce Basim Fasafadi from Qatar, Chair of Surgical Services, Saman Hospital, Doha, Qatar, formerly Chair of the Department of Surgery, Lebanese American University, Lebanon. Welcome, Basim. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, dear friends and colleagues, uh, wherever you are within the big IBC family. Uh, thank you, Dr. Harris. Thank you, Dr. Ariel, for your uh, uh, invitation. It gives me great pleasure to participate in the 46th uh, IBC Hot Topics in Surgery with the theme, the Easy Search Stapler 
under the microscope. And I would like to thank ahead of time, Drs. Layani and Lynn for moderating the session. Dr. Harris asked me to address the topic of cost effectiveness of staples uh, in the beginning. And then when we talked a little bit later, we decided to uh, name the topic, uh, the costs of actual uh, linear staples. So I will start sharing my presentation now. And to start with, in the spirit of um, um, disclosure, I'd like to disclose that I received uh, education and consulting uh, honoraria from Johnson & Johnson, Medtronic, and Easy Search. And the discussing the topic of the cost of linear staples, the cost of medical supplies is very important for us as surgeons, particularly bariatric surgeons. Because when we look at the total hospital uh, expenditure or budget, the supply chain accounts for at least 15% of the total expense. And when we look at uh, hospitals that uh, are uh, more surgical, the cost can be uh, up to 25 and 50%. This is a study uh, across thousands of American hospitals. And in that study, the mean supply expense was 3.76 million, and the median was close to 10 million US dollars. When we look at per patient admission, the supply expense was close to $4,500, large amounts. When we talk about the cost of medical supplies in bariatric surgery, the medical supply accounts for anywhere between 25 to 50% of the cost of the procedure. And that will vary significantly from country to country, from uh, payer system to payer system, et cetera. And when we look at the medical supply cost in bariatric surgery, the linear staples is probably the most expensive items among trocars, energy sealing devices, clip appliers, sutures, et cetera. Now, the big players in manufacturing and distributing of linear staplers are Ethicon Endosurgery, Johnson & Johnson, and Covidian, and they both supply the manual and the powered uh, staplers. As the patent of these uh, uh, technologies faded away, there are numerous companies that manufacture uh, a wide variety of staples, including linear staples. And most of these come from China. There are tens of these companies. And I mentioned some of these. Some of these are actual sponsors of IBC, uh, Panther, Fang, Easy Surge, among others. Now, when I started to embark on this uh, project that uh, Dr. Harris uh, assigned me to, I found uh, honestly, a great deal of difficulty in really uh, studying and analyzing the costs uh, of staples. Because we have to separate the two issues, the actual cost as well as the sale price. And these are totally different. When we talk about the cost of a medical supply, we have to factor in the intellectual uh, uh, property that goes behind it, the research and development, the product registration, and, and well as the cost of going through approval, whether it's FDA or other uh, legislative uh, entities. There's obviously the cost of manufacturing, but companies have also uh, large overheads when it comes to uh, payrolls, when it comes to rent of facilities, construction of facilities, etc. And then uh, quality control measures uh, differ significantly from one company to the other, and that comes also at a cost. There's a big cost component to sales and marketing, and that also can vary significantly from product to product. And then the final cost comes in logistics and shipments and uh, warehousing, et cetera. So this is some of the aspects when it comes to cost. Now, when it comes to the actual sale price, it's a different entity because that will uh, depend on what the market needs, will greatly depend on the presence of competition, competition not only between manufacturers and between uh, distributors, but also competition between hospitals. The sale price will also be um, dependent on the volume of sales. Obviously, the, the higher the number of sales, uh, the more likely that uh, hospitals uh, will get uh, um, discounts. There's also an important uh, entity here, which is bulk deals. And I've experienced that uh, uh, firsthand um, in many hospitals. 
So sometimes when a local distributor gets a very large uh, sale, sometimes uh, you can get some of these staples at uh, a very low cost or a very low price, even lower than their uh, cost of production, simply because that bulk deal will include profit in other areas. So again, uh, that will impact the sales price. Local distributors also, whether they're the sole vendors or whether there's no uh, uh, equivalent competition can dictate the sales price. In many countries, uh, government taxes can increase the cost and government subsidies can significantly uh, reduce the cost. We experienced that firsthand last year in Lebanon where the government subsidies were still ongoing and uh, the, uh, despite the great devaluation in the uh, Lebanese lira, the government was still subsidizing uh, these uh, medical supplies. And you can get staples in Lebanon for very, very, very low prices. And last but not least, the hospital also takes a profit and that profit uh, ranges significantly from hospital to hospital and from country to country. And that will ultimately impact the sale price to the patient or to the insurance company. So again, when Dr. Harris asked me to uh, talk about the cost, uh, there's a tremendous variation and I deliberately chose not to put any names because there's certainly always the chance of making a mistake. So I just decided uh, to call them, you know, uh, C, D, E, F, and G. And these are all uh, companies from China that manufacture staples and sell them in the Middle East. And I asked uh, multiple sources and got these averages. And these are mostly uh, prices from the MENA region. So the handle and the manual uh, stapler will cost anywhere between 150 to 300 US dollars. And the loading units can vary between uh, 60 to 140 US dollars. There's also great variations in the uh, price in countries. So for example, the loading unit in Turkey where uh, there is government subsidy uh, is on average $75. So again, it could be uh, lower, it could be higher, but the average is $75. Whereas in Qatar, it's 200 US dollars. And again, when we talk about cost, uh, we should also uh, talk about the indirect cost in the sense is when we have a faulty, uh, or poor quality stapler that may lead to a high rate of complications. Complications have certainly their cost. And there have been uh, several studies that have looked specifically into that. Unfortunately, most of these studies are not high quality studies. Most of them are retrospective. And as we see here in this uh, study, most of these studies, if not all, are actually sponsored by the companies that manufacture the product. So there's a big bias. It also raises an ethical and moral question is, you know, when there's a stapler that doesn't perform very well, certainly there's a, a cost to treating complications, but how can we measure loss of life? How can we me measure suffering of patients from these complications? And is it justifiable to only look at the difference in cost in uh, monetary values? So again, that's a topic by itself. In this study, uh, VATS lobectomy procedures, there was a comparison between powered staplers and the vast majority in this paper were produced by J&J &J compared to manual staplers. And again, 75% of those were uh, provided by Covidian. They extracted the data from uh, this database called Premier Healthcare Database. And when they looked at the total hospital cost, they were less on average with powered staplers, 23,000 compared to 26,000. And the uh, difference was statistically significant. And although there was not much uh, difference in terms of the supply cost, there was a significant reduction in length of stay, significant reduction in complications, notably bleeding and transfusion. And that's what ultimately le led to the reduction in uh, total uh, hospital costs. Another study, again, uh, supported uh, by Johnson & Johnson, looking at uh, circular staplers uh, and comparing echelon circular staplers to uh, others. 
And although the uh, annual total cost for the uh, powered uh, uh, stapler as, as far as medical supplies was higher, again here, there was a reduction in uh, complications, reduction in hospital stay, and an overall saving of close to $50,000 per 100 admissions. Now, we have a great opportunity here as surgeons through organizations such as IBC, IFSO, and others to look specifically at this and look at the cost versus outcomes. Most hospitals we work at have sophisticated HIMS systems. And honestly, we uh, don't even use maybe five or 10% of the capabilities of this HIMS system. There's barcoding system in most sophisticated hospitals that can allow us to track these uh, medical uh, equipment, devices, and supplies, including uh, staplers. And we have registries and databases that record bariatric surgical outcomes worldwide. And we have the capabilities nowadays with powerful computers and artificial intelligence to look at these questions. So it behooves us as surgeons to start organizing and looking at the data. And instead of waiting for companies to provide us, maybe we should have a more uh, objective look at these uh, staples and really examine the outcomes as well as the cost. So in conclusion, surgical supplies constitute a significant portion of the cost of the procedures in staple bariatric surgery, and linear staples is the leading expense item. Chinese companies are producing high quality and less expensive products compared to established companies. The cost of these supplies have to be weighed to their safety profile, and electronic databases and registries should track utilization of these products and track outcomes accordingly. Thank you very much. It was a wonderful talk. Um, we're, we're running short of time then, sorry. Uh, here is Professor Vergula. We are going to pass to directly to the, the panel discussion. Hello, Thomas, how are you? It's my privilege to present our founder of the International Medical Club, Professor of Surgery, Case Western Reserve, University of Cleveland Clinic, Ohio. So Tom, welcome, and thank you very much for the invitation to this uh, wonderful panel. Thank you so much. So this is my great uh, privilege and pleasure. Um, you know, I've been using, uh, I would say, alternative standards for more than two years in my private practice. And I tell you, I'm very, very happy. Um, so my own personal experience is, yes, uh, we don't need to stick into uh, uh, no, one certain uh, products, including the one that, that, we, uh, that we're discussing today. Um, I want to open the um, discussion and um, invite uh, uh, invite um, the, the panelists. Um, and uh, let me start from from a personal question: um, Is there anything you would be af what, what are you afraid of when you're thinking about the alternative staters? Maybe we'll, we will start from... Misfires and breakdowns. Okay, misfires and breakdowns. Do, do you have any, any uh, personal bad experience in these regards? Or just the general fear? I think all of us have had personal experience with, with misfires and we have learned to work around these things, right, Tom? Okay, right, right, right. Um, one more question. Um, do you tell patients that uh, I'm going to use this and that stapler and I have this and that experience? Or you, you, don't, discuss, you don't disclose it to the patient? I'm going to let other people answer, but um, not specifically. Okay. No. Dr. Yeah. Wayan, what do, you, what do you think about that? Mike on? Yeah, and in our hospital, uh, before when we sign the consent uh, with the patients, we will uh, 
let the patient know what brands they can choose or what brands we are going to use. For example, are we going to use the uh, local, uh, the products from the local company or from the foreign companies? And if the patient want to choose on their own, they will choose on their own uh, products uh, about a stapler. And if they don't have any idea, then we will uh, choose the products for them. And as Tom just asked, uh, what, what we uh, care about is the quality. And when we first using the new uh, products or new uh, stabilizers, we will uh, pay more attention on the quality. And the next is the price, of course. Uh, if it, it is uh, relative cheaper than, but uh, equal uh, quality, we will choose the cheaper one. And then uh, what other consideration, for example, if any companies, they have more academic sponsorship, for example, uh, sponsor the uh, conference, symposium, etc., And some of them even uh, sponsor some uh, clinical uh, research projects. These uh, companies may get more uh, attraction to the surgeons maybe. And of course the choice is up to the surgeons themselves. It, there may have some bias, but uh, of course uh, quality may uh, come first. This is uh, our experience. Thank you, right. Rob. Thank you, Rob. Tom, if you let me, let me introduce all our expert panels because we have from all over the world, Dr. Wayan from China, Consultant Bariatric Surgery, International Bariatric Center, the first affiliated hospital of China, University, Guangzhou, China, President-elect Zhang Ifso, Vice President, Jinan University Institute of Obesity and Metabolic Disorders, Director of Chinese Obesity and Metabolic Surgery Collaborative. Next is Professor Charles Pengshang from China, Chief Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery, Beijing, Friendship Hospital, Capital Medical University, Beijing, China, welcome. Professor Antonio Claudio Hanel Coelho, Brazil, past president of the Brazilian Society of Bariatric and Metabolic Surgery, Rio de Janeiro, chapter 2017-2020, vice president of Brazilian Society of Laparoscopic and Robotic Surgery, Rio de Janeiro, chapter, assistant professor of surgery, Universidade Estatio Sa, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Welcome, Antonio. Thank you. Dr. Dr. Tajida Tadija Pintar from Slovenia, assistant professor of surgery, Ljubljana, University Medical Center and University of Ljubljana, Faculty of the Dominant Surgery, Ljubljana, Slovenia. So we have a, a, a complete expert of panels. So thank you very much. And all, all, the, all, the, um, all the speakers, now we ha will have a very great discussion. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, thank you so much. So, so let, let me ask you one more question. Um, uh, I know we're all concerned about costs, and uh, but um, if you have um, a choice to uh, to have a, a company uh, or partners who can listen to you, uh, I mean, a relatively small company, uh, the staple producer, who will ask you after bunch of cases. Hi, doctor. How is your case going? Uh, is there anything we can properly work on uh, to improve the product? What's the particular concern that you have? Um, would you rather pay maybe similar price and have that kind of partnership uh, to you know, speak directly to the, to the producer? And this is the advantage, I think, uh, uh, with the alternative uh, producers that, uh, that we have. And this is my own experience. But I want to ask you if you in, in, appreciate that kind of uh, direct feedback from the company. May I May, begin? Maybe, maybe. Yes, yes, go ahead. Sure. May I begin? Yeah, I, I'd like to address the previous questions of uh, what is the most, uh, if I, we choose or do not choose, if you tell the patient if you, we are using this or that stapler, I think you, one thing you, we, we, we shall keep in, uh, keep in mind is that all of them are FDA or CE approved. So they are all uh, by any means safe for human using, okay? That's it. So 
uh, many of times, most of the times, when a cost, when the patient is not paying directly for the for the staplers, mm -hmm. I, I don't tell them which stapler uh, I will use because, uh, of course, all of them are safe uh, in, in, a, in a reasonable basis to, to use in, in humans. Mm -hmm. uh, this, this Tom uh, uh, asked us, it would be very, very good that we, all of us could have a direct channel to feedback all the companies based on the experience we have. Uh, why that misfire happened? Uh, did I left some, some staples uh, uh, in the wrong place or was a, 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 a defect of, the, of the, the gun, of the machine? So I think it, it, it's, it would be a very, very good concern. Uh, uh, the other thing, I, I have never used Easy Surge, but we do have uh, many Chinese staplers here in, here in Brazil that are proven to use. I especially use Panther. I think it's a, a very good, a very good manufacturer. Uh, I use the powered one, like uh, uh, Professor Laurent. I I prefer the powered one, so uh, it's very, it's very good. It's, it's just a single button stapler and it's very comfortable to use cheaper and cost here in brazil is very 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 concerning so even the the, the company the insurance companies press us to use the the low cost staples of course if they have the quality of course we feel, feel comfortable using it very good very good and uh, so let, let me let me comment right away um um I uh, t I tell my patient what staples I'm using. Uh, I, I put the name of the company and my own experience uh, with the stapler. Uh, and uh, I usually try to give them some uh, some sort of uh, feedback uh, from other sources like IBC, for example, that we discuss those kind of staples. They are safe, there was no concerns. They should not be worried about. Now, uh, and, and this is a question to all of uh, the, the the panel uh, list. Um, uh, I think the general fear and the reason why some of us might not uh, reveal the staples is that I would uh, don't don't uh, don't get me wrong, please. Uh, especially my, my my Chinese friends, uh, I really value your your, your job. Uh, maybe some of us are a little bit afraid of saying, oh, this is not an American staple, or this is maybe, uh, I know, Polish stapler or Chinese staple or whatever, Czech stapler. And it, it might sound not quite, you know, uh, good in your opinion in, in, in uh, patients a year. And maybe that's the reason why we don't uh, reveal that. Uh, but again, the, the, the reality is these are very good staplers. Uh, we know this very well, and they are very good alternatives to, to the current one. Um, I just want to hear your opinion. Is this the reason why you would not reveal the name of the, of the company? Or maybe there's some other reasons. Can I answer this question? Of course. Yes. I mean, to be honest with you, with all my respect, it's totally, it's, to me, uh, asking the patient what stapler are you going to use is totally useless, brother. I mean, the patient doesn't even know anything about anything. Are you going to tell your patient that you're going to assist your registrar or your fellow to do the operation or to do the shot here and the shot here? Patients don't understand. Obviously, if you are Americans or French like me and you say, well, you know, my friend, I, I have an American stapler. Or I have a Chinese stapler. Which one do you like? Well, it's like if you want a Ferrari or you want an Aval or you want an MG, they're going to say, well, what do you think, doctor? It, it depends how you present. To be honest with you, yeah. asking the, telling the patient I'm going to use this or this or this or this type of stapler is unnecessary because patient mm -hmm. doesn't really understand, doesn't know. You can have a problem with a Covidian, a GNJ. I am a great believer on this. And now I use a Chinese. He can accident or issues can happen with anything, with the best of the best mm -hmm. or this one or this one. So the patient uh, doesn't have to come to the equation, to be honest. 
But if you put yourself in this situation and say, well, do you want a Czech uh, gun, a Polish gun, or an English gun, or an American gun? Well, it's not an easy, you almost uh, put the patient in a difficult situation, by the way. And, uh, and in fact, yourself as well, because imagine and if the patient say, well, I, w I tell you that I like the Americans, but you tell me then if I use the Chinese, it will be cheaper. And bad luck, you have a complication and you end the shit. So, and the patient will say, well, you mm -hmm. know, doctor, you told me then you like this one, but I use this one. I think it's no need, to be honest, no need. Very good. I really appreciate it. It's a, it's a good point. Yes, I, I agree uh, with you, though. I, I do I agree, agree with you, though. I huh? echo what uh, Laurent just said, and uh, it is not always important to uh, tell the patient uh, what uh, you are going to use. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it is not the horse, it is the rider. And I, I tell the patient that you are coming to me, not to my stapler, to my stitch, exactly. again, to my technique, to what I do. So even the best uh, staplers in the world with the uh, with a bad surgeon will have a complication. Uh, and uh, for the staplers, and I tell them I have uh, uh, staplers that are FDA and CE approved from whatever the staplers are, if they ask, uh, they ask for. But again, I can understand the fee, I mean, the demand, uh, the more and more demand of the patients, because you, you know, we have social media, patients are asking. Uh, so uh, patients now, now are aware, Laurent of uh, tri-stapler, of automated gun, etc. So sometimes they ask you specifically these questions, but this is my answer to my patients. But I Sam, just to finish it, to give the time, I, I, and to, if the patient ask me, if the patient come and ask me or ask you, what do you use? I think you should tell the patient what you use. This mm -hmm. is a very different okay. story. And it has happened to me also, I just, and I finished. Then if the patient said, you know, doctor, I want my sleeve with you, blah, 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 but I want the J&J stapler. I want the American stapler. And the, the cost of my operation was basically 24,000 dirham or 25,000 dirham or 26. And because they asked me this specific question to use something else, then I will say to the patient, you know, you want this particular, then the price has to change. Okay. Professor Penshan, what do you think about what we're discussing? Mike, microphone, please. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's a very nice discussion. Well, so uh, I always, you know, competition is always good. And uh, when, when you select a stapler, we should always consider price, the balance between price and versus quality, which is okay. And, uh, and uh, 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 for, to be to be honest, Ashcon Ashcon stip, uh, Ashton stapler is less expensive in China than Easy Search stapler. Well, you know that it, it's not always that uh, uh, American brand name is is more expensive in China. But you know, as a company, they want they want always want you want patient pay more price for that. They promote some power stapler. They promote some uh, GST technology, things like that, we want to make patients spend more money on that. But as a surgeon, we need to control the budget. We, we need to balance the safety versus price. I think any product, as long as it is approved by the national regulatory body, there should be the, the efficacy and, uh, and the safety should have passed the uh, standard, which is equally good. I mean, uh, we, 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 we have a, a impression that all, 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 well, so the Chinese stapler is cheaper than the, the other stapler brand name. And uh, that means the, the quality is lower, but that frankly is not true. And uh, I, I, let's see the, like for instance, like a easy search stapler, it's not only the me too stapler, it's even a me better stapler because they have some, uh, 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 some new features. So since that like 60 degree, articulation, which is great, you know, when, especially when you do a single hole uh, oh. procedure, 60 degree really helps you a lot. And the, the other, the other uh, feature, the, the easy surge has that grasping force, 
which is bigger than the rest of the stapler, and it give, really give you less bleeding when you cut. And uh, it's lighter, and uh, the handle is smaller, and especially for some female surgeon or all, all, all the surgeon with the smaller hand, it's really comfortable. It's more ergonomic, ergonomic features. And uh, the other thing, the most, imp most important thing is more cost effective in, the, in many countries in the world, in many countries in the world. And uh, uh, well, so I, we are also very happy to see that uh, easy search to support the training events and uh, academic events, which is really good. I hopefully, hopefully, then uh, we easy search can be accepted by uh, more and more surgeons. And uh, I, I welcome any competitions. Uh, in my center, we use uh, we use all kinds of staplers, and uh, patients request some some less expensive stapler, I already provided with them. Let's say you can try the Ashikon, uh, Ashikon Flex, which is the uh, most, uh, you know, it's most less expensive uh, product we have. And uh, yeah. Thank so you very always, much. Yeah, always, always we should prov provide the value-based healthcare to our patients, which is really important. All right. All yeah. right. Thank you very much, Bang. The lady of the group, Dr. Dadija Pintar. Where yes, coming, hello. Uh, hello, nice greetings from Ljubljana. Uh, thank you for the very or excellent debate. And um, I was one, uh, we are believers in the most two frequent staplers uh, with my colleagues, me including uh, g and g and, uh, it, and um, Medtronic, but nevertheless, we have been tested uh, also others, but uh, at the end, we decided for um, two um, um, type uh, of uh, staplers, two producers, but I was wonder wondering uh, during the debate, uh, what about the, the number of different staplers regarding to the volume of operations? Do you think that uh, this may uh, represent one of the possible uh, troubles uh, or also explaining to the patients when something happens. Uh, for example, if I'm using just one stapler, I'm very used and comfortable with uh, the stapler. If there is complication, I can simply explain the patient uh, I'm always using. Uh, there was a technical trouble or maybe other trouble, what, uh, what do your colleagues uh, uh, think about this? And understand the question. So, so let, let me answer this, uh, in, uh, because we, we're very close, uh, I mean, geographically. Um, um, so, so first of all, uh, another small comment, uh, when I, practice in the United States, it was very difficult uh, to, to pick up alternatives like, uh, like that stapler because we, because of the contract and whatever, uh, the business reasons, we kind of get, uh, got stuck with one of uh, the major brands. Uh, when I moved to Poland, uh, it's easier uh, because it's a little bit less uh, stiff. Those regulations are in place, but we, we, we have more choices. Uh, so um, practicing bariatric surgery in these regards is, is easier. Uh, now, in terms of, of, because your question was about the volume and experience, right? With certain, uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's a, a little bit of, the, um, of, um, of my personal, um, uh, you know, fear at the beginning, because there, I mean, there's little uh, experience in general uh, with those other staplers. Um, uh, and uh, I, you know, personally, I try to uh, talk to my colleagues who use that particular stapler uh, directly. This is this is how IBC really works because we we know each other very well. And I just talk to them, uh, you know, face to face. Hey, uh, have you heard about that kind of staplers? Uh, what do you think? Uh, any issues? Any problems? Uh, how is it handled? This kind of so it's a personal uh, communication and it's very honest. Uh, I mean, we're not biased, we're not paid by real uh, information. And I, I use that kind of, um, I would say, cumulative experience from my colleagues. And then I 
now trusting them, I move forward and start using the, 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 those statements. And then I provide same opinion to colleagues who ask me what, what I think. Uh, so that's, that's my approach. Dr. Waya? I have a question to uh, Edward Lin, since he's practicing in the US. Uh, going out of politics, I mean, um, we know that, uh, for example, Huawei iPhone, there was a problem and uh, Huawei probably is not allowed in the US now. And if you have, I mean, the uh, uh, the luxury of, do, of using another product not manufactured in the US, like the Chinese one, would you uh, go and uh, try it uh, if it is FDA approved? Well, I think that is already in the process, right, in the United States. I think it's better for all of us to get away from attaching a stapler to an ethnic group or a country, right? We should stop saying the Turkish stapler, the Czech stapler, or the American stapler. I mean, frankly, I think the two big U.S. companies, the staplers are probably made el elsewhere, not not on the American soil. So, it's let's not be let's not fool ourselves, right? So the answer is yes, because. At the end, I think, you know, Peng Sang was saying, uh, what's the value-based thing that we're going to uh, uh, give to our patients, right? And uh, for, for, from our Slovenia colleague, I will say that to answer your question and to follow your comment is that we should do the same operation every time. We, we should, in our operating rooms, not give patients a menu, but you say, this is the one I've used a hundred times. In, in a month or in a year, you know, so that if there is no change and no variation. And that way we can follow our data. And that way we can be honest with our patients to say, yes, I trust the stapler, I do it all the time. It's not, it has nothing to do with how much I'm paying for it. I have to, I have to just tell you, and then I, be, I, I, it will be very hard to believe to me then in the, in the American system, which I know, because I, I, George, my friend in New York, I've been there many, many times. I, I, I find very hard to believe that it's going to be possible to introduce Chinese stapler in the US. I, I mean, to be quite <laughs> frank with you. Dr. Guayan. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I would like to go back to the, uh, the question that whether we should tell the patient uh, what stapler, which stapler uh, we are using. Because in, in mainland China, and the stapler belongs to, to a category, what we call a high value uh, equipment. That means that the, the equipment is very expensive. We have to, uh, we are asked uh, by the regulation uh, to sign a consent with the patient to tell them, uh, this stapler, this is, uh, equipment uh, is very expensive and which brand we are using and which model we are using. So the, all the patients will know uh, the brands and the price. And we are doing this because uh, all these equipment are not uh, covered by the government insurance. And that's why uh, our regulations ask us to sign the consent with the patients. So maybe it is a little bit different between uh, the China and other countries uh, on this. Why not? This, this, is, this is a very good point. Uh, uh, so um, uh, another question is, when you dictate your op note, do you provide the name of, of the stapler? And is, is it necessary in your countries to, uh, to mention what, what type of stapler you use? Uh, usually we will mention about the price uh, to the patient okay. and if the patient asks the brands we usually uh, let them know yeah. now you, yeah. you know in the open notes we are attached the barcode of each stapler to the open note it can be tractable in future if anything recall we know which patient had the what kind of which uh which stapler and when was that produced yeah talking about the barcode and Starting from a few years ago, uh, we are asked to stick the barcode on the uh, medical uh, records. So the, the patient will know that. And if anything uh, happens, we can trace uh, the equipment we used uh, during the surgery. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's, it is a big difference. The question was uh, the, the barcode, we, we, we all do that. 
but uh, you, it's a difference between the uh, uh, be able to to trace the barcode, obviously. But you do I with uh, with the putting the uh, uh, the type of stapler in the operating notes. This is quite different. In the operating notes, most of the people don't do that. And do you think it is necessary, Laurent? Do you think it is necessary to do it? No, I don't think so. I, I, I no, I don't think because uh, I, what you're going to say, I'm going to use the uh, Ethicon manual, uh, um, blah blah blah. What you, what we do, what you can do, I think perhaps is to to use to to use to to talk about the color. I think it may it could be relevant uh, the color because, for example, if you do a revision. And uh, you do a sleeve to MGB, and you, you transect the the supra the the, the the inferior border of the stomach with a blue and a crack, and you should have used a black or bl green. Perhaps somebody will review like me. Sometimes I can review the case, it's not to not to upset or not to uh, you know jump on my colleague surgeon. But obviously, if somebody is going to use a white when he should be using a green, okay. it's a huge difference, right? So I ask my surgeon, my, my team to at least, at least say, okay, three blue, two green, one gold, one this, one this, one purple, uh, wh whatever company you use. This ha can have some relevant uh, issue in your surgical technique. I, and I'm sure you agree with me. Yes, yes, I do. I, I usually put the the the, 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 the nice. Lines. Yeah. You will say okay. 60 blue, 45 blue, 45 green, 45 Correct. gold, uh, purple, or whatever. I think makes sense. Okay. Yeah. How many times do you use uh, a single pistol? Do you re-serialize them or not? Do you ask me? Yes. Yeah, we actually, uh, I, 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 I'm, I, don't, I don't mind to, to, to tell the truth. Uh, uh, from uh, my work in India or here or anywhere, we have been reusing the gun. Uh, and uh, in fact, I have even learned how to reuse the power echelon to crack the microchip. You can crack the microchip and reuse the gun because if you don't crack the microchip at the end of the gun, then it, it will lock. When you crack it, you can use it. Uh, and obviously the big difference it's a lot easier to reuse the Covidian type gun because it's, a, it's always a gun to reuse, but it's not the same stapler. The, the, the cartridges is a different, means it's a different knife every time, which is a big problem if you use the J&J uh, &J type gun because it's the same knife when you change the cartridges, right? So, um, it's uh, when you are in India, for example, and you are in a, in, a, in, a, in a limbo to reuse, it's easier to reuse the Covidian type, which is, for example, easy surge type gun, because you keep the gun and you change the cartridges. You got my point? Yes, yes, I do. What about the others? You, I have reused it. Uh, you can say to me, well, you know, the knife, how can you clean the knife and this blood in the knife? and it's not a new knife, blah, blah, blah. I have done it and I, I push, the, 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 I, I push the, the limit of it to use for three patients, which means 18 shots, 18, so six by three, six by three on average, six by three. I, after that, I, think to my, I thought to myself, forget about the knife is not going to cut. Okay. Maybe I should push more, but this is what mm. I've done. Okay, and thank you for joining. Let, 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 let me let let me tell you experience in, in Brazil. We yeah, used okay. it back ten years ago until we have a mycobacteria issue here, so it's not allowed anyway to reuse anything. Ultrasound, and, and, and of course you know it could be reused, but we, we cannot do it anymore. And another particularity here in Brazil is that government two years ago made all the insurance company to pay for bariatric surgery. So the company, they have contracts with specific stapler manufacturers every year. So we have to describe in the open notes the, 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 the brand of the, of the stapler because 
the, the audits from the insurance company will come from the barcode and what we have, we have written on the open note. So that's the reason why we put uh, the, 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 the brand of the stapler in the open notes. That's a particular problem issue here in Brazil. Yes, we understand that the, the, micro, the microbacteria thing was because you, you were using uh, not heat, you were using not gas, you were using all the water liquid sterilization. Yeah, 10, that correct? Uh, 15 years ago, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. But, but the so FDA my, my, here. Uh, so my question is that if you reuse the stapler gun, then uh, if you put a barcode on your OP note, then how, what kind of, op what kind of barcode are going to put there? You just put the stapler. But listen, this is the, the cartridge, question. right? L listen, listen. This is a, the question from my colleagues was basically, have you done it? The answer is yes. Should you done it? I don't know. Is it possible to do it? The answer is yes. Do you have more problem when you do it? The answer is no. Exactly. Okay. The others, I want to hear a comment about this, this, this issue from the others. Tadija? Yes, in Slovenia, we are not allowed to reuse the staplers and any other things. Uh, all the staplers are going out immediately after uh, the surgery. But on the other hand, we are obliged to put into the uh, operative charge the the color of the stapler and the length of the stapler and the number of cartridges used and uh, of course if there was any uh, an, an uh, expected uh, situation during surgery like everywhere but uh, otherwise no reusable things in uh, Ljubljana. Okay, Haizam? Uh, well, um, uh, I think it is difficult to provide a first-class medicine in, in poor countries. Unfortunately, I say it now, our country has really become one of the um, uh, poorest in the region. And our GDP dropped to below $100, $150 per month. You cannot imagine the drop we had during the last two years. But I try to, to stick to the a standard of care as much as I can. So uh, I'm using from time to time, one uh, and two times the, uh, the gun and uh, not more than this. Okay, Osama, are you with us here? Osama? Okay, Edward, I know, you, I, I know your, your answer, but give us your thoughts, please. Uh, I've operated abroad and I would really love to reuse staplers and save costs. And I'm so fascinated by the Lawrence experience cracking the chip. I can't wait to take the next one and try it myself. <laughs> That's good. Well, it's a, I find this trick in India, my friend, and it does work very well. It, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, you know where to go. You have to go straight down and, and go deep and crack it. When you crack it, you can remove it. Then you can use the gun again. <laughs> yes, we are surgeons, always improvising. That's good. That's good, Laurent. My, my, my friend, uh, the guy in charge of J&J, &J, he couldn't believe when I show him this. But look, it's not like I want to uh, uh, push people to do, but it's a lot of things you can do. I want to give you another, another, ex another experience. When I used to work in India, I probably used the Liga Shore on 50 times, 50 times on 50 different cases, and it still worked. The ammonic scalpel, you can also reuse it and re-sterilize it. And it's easy to know when it stops working because when it stops to do bop, 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 it's gone. Bye-bye, see you later. And you just use another one. And many of, of this, uh, this thing, and most in a lot of countries, they don't talk about this. They don't want to tell you about this. They're not honest about it. But believe me, a lot of places, they do that. This is what I like from IVC. We can discuss everything we want and we can do it yeah. honestly. Right, Thomas? Uh, there, there, there are more and more, there are more and more company. They, they provide something called smart ID chip system. You know, you can only use one patient and then they're going to lock your gun. But, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. When, yeah. 
the J and J power echelon uh, uh, on uh, uh, if you use it. Um, uh, you cannot reuse the gun because after you use it, after exactly 24 hours, you can use for the same uh, for a, a second patient at the same on the same day without cracking the chip. So basically, you do one case, you you do another case, you do a third case. The time to re-sterilize the gun if you want to use it, and then but if you wait 24 hours, you cannot. But anyway, this is just um, some um, checks. It's, it's not that important right, really. Right. Excellent. Thank I have, you for the pearls and tricks, guys. I have I have one, one, yeah. one more thing to, to add. Uh, and uh, again, this is from my own experience uh, from using different papers. Uh, I try to videotape, record every single case uh, for two reasons. First, uh, sometimes I, I want to look back and, and see how it looks uh, in kind of cold eyes without you know, emotions of doing this. Second, for uh, the for the for the product improvement, I would say, uh, because I have some something to show the company. I make a clips of the video and send back to the to the company and say, listen, uh, in my opinion, this is a little bit too tight or whatever. Um, do you do this kind of documentation, uh, the panel? I, I personally I review all my videos. We, I review all my videos. We videotape everything. Same okay. here, same here. The same here. I, I, think, yeah, I just want to tell you something very important, I think, overall. If whatever gun you use uh, and whatever country, uh, whatever manufacturer you use, I think it is very important if you can have the safety, uh, the safety button to lock and unlock if something happened to go back. So this is important. This is a very uh, important features in any type of gun to be able to stop and go back, put the, the, the return and have the knife going back. And this has, uh, if, if you, you, can, you can save a lot of uh, terrible situation of an impossible to reopen the gun when it's uh, uh, closed, means uh, you can imagine the situation you have to cut with the knife of a dart on the, on the, on the sleep side. So the, 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 the safety part of the, you know what I'm talking about, this little button to, uh, re, to go return, go back and do it again and basically change the gun. So this is a very in interesting uh, features to whatever gun you use are important. Yes, and one thing else uh, Laurent and he added to what we discussed and we know that medical companies uh, uh, are the companies that uh, provide us with uh, this instrument to uh, gain more and more money and to give us something that is really good. So the issue of single use really sometimes, and I cannot understand when they told you, no, you cannot sterilize at all while I can sterilize my bipolar, my clamps, my etc. So I think it is for us as clinicians to judge sometimes. Now, no, they are pushing more and more to having a completely uh, single use things that are really expensive for our patients, for the insurance company, for everyone. And we can judge where the safety is. Uh, I think this is something that we should take into consideration. But one, 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 one thing you can, we can, you can do is, is what we do in my, in my uh, general surgical practice is, for example, for all the bariatric, you use the harmonic scalpel. And if you want to reuse it, what I do is I use it and give to my younger surgeon to do a lap appendix or lap cole or, or something else, which actually you can reuse the, 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 the device for some minor type of operation. So this is another, another way to, to try to 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 see uh, uh, things uh, in in a kind of a, a, a economical uh, uh, situation. That, that that that's all. Okay. Good. Well, one one so, more so, thing, and 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 uh, maybe a suggestion or whatever you take it. Uh, what I like doing is I uh, I'm talking about sleeve. I take the uh, the resected stomach out on the side table. And I, I look carefully at the staple, the staple line, line. Yeah. outside. See how yeah. is it formed? Because laparoscopically, honestly, you don't have that kind of uh, closed look. 
but you can actually uh, look at the quality of the stapling at this resected stomach. I even sometimes do the kind of air leak test. I put some water and see how is it sealed. But just the visual assessment helped me a lot to, to have some ideas how the stapling really works. Uh, yeah, do you do this kind of thing? This is an interesting situation. This is an interesting thing to do. The question I'm going to tell you, because I used to do this for JNJ for research and we stopped the research is, and so what are you going to do if you don't like it? When it's all Nothing. finished? All right, Nothing. you don't get I mean, to do anything. Too, too late. So you're going to think, oh my God, oh my God, maybe tonight. I have to... So do you understand my point? And, and, and it, this uh, is all about what is going to be what is the implication in your clinical practice of, oh, I love this part. Oh, I like this. It looks good. Is it? So, yeah, I mean, you, you, it's, it's, why not? Hi, hi Tom. I, I do the same as you. I usually, uh, I usually check the uh, staple line uh, on the excised stomach. I know we, we worry about leaks a lot. Every, every surgeon, every bariatric surgeon worry about leaks. So, but uh, most, most of the time leak is not because of stapler itself. It's because for number one, it's a thermal injury. You, 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 you use an energy device, you reuse that, make that temperature, temperature is really, really high, going to injure, cause some thermal injury to the founders of stomach. That's the main cause of the leaks. Yeah, that's, 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 that, that's number one. You know, number one cause of leaks, thermal injury. So I, I mean, if you if you reuse the like harmonic or you reuse the uh, ligature, do you see a higher incidence of leaks? I don't see leaks. No, at I, all I don't all. think uh, personally that really heat injury is uh, the main cause of leak. With my respect to Dr. Uh, Zhang, yani it is uh, it is rather uh, probably we can talk about high pressure ischemia, um, some some misfiring, but. Um, the leak from uh, heating injury should be in another location from what we see at the level of the GE junction. Um, so I'm, I really tend to disagree with the final statement. No, I completely disagree. In fact, it could be almost the opposite because you can imagine that if you do do reuse the, the, the harmonic, you can expect that it might maybe work in a less power situation. So he might not overheat, but he might less heat. So no, I, I, I don't think uh, it's the truth. <clears throat> Most of this provides some kind of visual examination of staple line, whether on the outside or on the inside, there's a look by now that everybody knows. And there are, we call herald signs of things that you say, I need to do a second look, right? Bleeding or the staple lines are crisscrossing. You always take a little extra look at these things. So most of us probably have these signs that we look look for to say, all right, second check. And I think uh, if you wanna examine it on the outside, when we first started it, that's what we did. And on the rare occasion, some staple line on the outside didn't look bad. The patient's still on the table, we'll kind of, we'll take a quick look again, right? So. Um, I think there are signs that we have all learned to learn to uh, uh, use as herald signs for bad staple formation. But yeah, this uh, thing will let you sometimes lose uh, time in the operating room. And I'm, I'm telling you from my experience also, Lana Tom, and I used to do what you're doing, but sometimes during the extraction of the specimen, you have a lot of tension of the uh, GIA and uh, you'll find it outside uh, open in uh, several times and uh, several places, sorry. So you go in again and you look at it and you put more stitches. So. I agree to see, uh, to look at it if you have any doubt, but I don't do it routinely. Okay, so guys, we're running out of time. So thank you very much to everyone for being here. Thank you very much for all your expertise. And I pass to Ariel to say goodbye. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you everyone for being here. And it's my pleasure from Guatemala. Greetings from Guatemala, Central America. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ariel. This has been an IBC Oxford University Hot Topics in Surgery production. I want to thank my co-chair, our moderators, and our distinguished panel of experts for their valuable time and talent today. We want to acknowledge all our partners and sponsors as our global education produces better and safer outcomes. 
Register to obtain CME credits for this and upcoming events at cine-med.com forward slash IBC 2021. To view the complete Hot Topics series, subscribe to our IBC YouTube channel and follow us on our social media platforms. Mark your calendars as the third IBC Oxford University Congress has been rescheduled to September 19th through the 21 of 2022. For more information, go to ibccongress.org. And now let's view another brief episode of IBC's exclusive Spotlight on Industry and today's sponsor. From IBC Global, stay safe and God bless. Shanghai, the most progressive city in China, a global center for counter-edge science and technology. In 2011, E.T. Sir Medical was born here. Technical innovation has ensured E.T. Sir's leading position in promoting new techniques from minimal invasive surgery. Our R&D team is committed to exploring better solutions, creating clinical value, focusing on details, and ensuring the very highest quality. Every time a key obstacle is overcome, we realized a breakthrough in minimal invasive surgery medical device. In Shanghai and Suzhou, EasyCirc's two large production facilities are beginning to take shape. Clearums at GMP 100,000 grade, automated production lines, and a system for lean manufacturing, and efficient quality management system have laid the cornerstone for the outstanding quality. High quality surgical devices, we have received the highest recognition from clinical experts in the world. In the field of minimal invasive surgical equipment, we have created our very own self-reliant premium brand. To ensure that innovation never stops, EasyCirc has created its own unique knowledge database model for product design. Medical will continue its work in technical innovation and industrialization of premium medical devices, assisting in the creation of Shanghai Center of Technical Innovation and creating a respectable, exclusive brand for global minimally invasive surgical products. We aim to be an influential participant in the international market and to help surgeons and patients throughout the world.